Bottom line is, is when you have two binomials, same exact terms, but one is plus and one is minus, it will always work out to be first term squared minus second term squared. We showed exactly why that happens in the last section, so go back to the last section if you want to recap on that. Secondly, and probably even more commonly, if you have a plus b squared, you'll get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. If you have a minus b squared, you'll have a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So now what we want to do is roll up our sleeves and just use these properties over and over and over again to help you basically memorize them. So, <clears throat> excuse me, what if on a test you have something like this, 3x plus 10 and square. I want to stress to you over and over again that you don't have to use these things. 3x plus 10 squared can be written as 3x plus 10 times 3x plus 10. That's two binomials and you can do the FOIL and, and, and distribute everything out and get the answer, no problem. But if you happen to know these things, it can save you a little bit of time from doing that. Because now we know it's a squared plus uh, 2ab plus b squared. Notice there's a plus sign here. Where a is just the first thing, which is 3x. So the first term we're going to get is basically going to be, wrapping in parentheses, 3x squared. That's the first term. Plus 2 times the first term times the second term. So we'll have a 3x and then times a 10. And then we'll have plus the last term squared, b squared, 10 squared. And yeah, we still have to go in a second line and, and write it all out, but it's basically a little simpler to keep track of. Now 3x squared means the square applies to the 3 and also to the x. So you'll get 9x squared plus 2 times 3 is 6, but then you have times 10, so you'll get a 60x plus 10 times 10 is 100. This is the final answer. And in a lot of cases, especially with a little bit more complicated items here, this can be a little bit faster than writing them side by side and multiplying everything out and adding everything up. But, you know, ultimately it's just another way of doing a pr the problem uh, slightly differently. So, what if you had, for the next example, what if we had uh, 5y minus 2, and we're going to multiply that times 5y plus 2. Right? So the thing we want to notice is that we have the first terms are the same, the last terms are the same. We have 1 by a minus and 1 by a plus. Now notice the way we've written it here is, notice we have a minus b, a plus b. Here we have a plus b, a minus b. But the answer will be the same no matter if, notice in this case the first term has the plus sign, here the first term has the minus sign, here has the minus sign, here has the plus sign. That's the why I'm doing this problem. It doesn't matter that because when you multiply anything together, 2 times 3 is 6, and also 3 times 2 is 6. You can flip the order of anything you multiply together. So I could just as easily write this as, for instance, I could write this as 5y plus 2, 5y minus 2, right? Because I can take the order of these and flip them around. Now it matches exactly what I have on the board. And what do I get? When it's a plus b, a minus b, all you do is you say first term squared, 5y squared, minus the second term squared, which is a 2 squared. And then when we square the 5y, 5, 5 times 5 will give me 25. The y times y gives me y squared minus 4. That's the final answer. And that actually very certainly is easier than distributing everything in and canceling the in inner terms and getting this. So we get 25y squared minus 4. All right, let's work on another one. What if we get, or what if we have, a little bit trickier, what if we have 9 times t plus 1, and then 1 minus 9t. Now this is where things get a little tricky. Of course you can multiply this out. You can distribute the 9t in, then you can distribute the 1 in, and you can, um, you can cancel it all and get the answer. That's no problem. But I'm trying to teach you how to use these special products, right? So I'm going to do this problem in a different way than I typically would do it to show you that I can use these special products, right? Now 9t plus 1 and this is, notice, 1 minus 9t. That doesn't quite match what we have here. This says it has to be the same exact thing plus something, the same exact thing minus something. But this isn't quite right because this is 9t and this is not 9t. So it's, it's almost like this one's backwards. So what we want to do is we want to change this to flip it around where it's 9t minus 1. So how can we do that? We can use the algebra that we understand. Let's write the first term down, 9t uh, plus 1. Now what happens if we factor out from both of these terms a negative 1? If I factor out a negative 1 from there, just work with me here, you would have on the inside here, you'd have a negative 1 plus 9t. If I pull out a minus 1, I'm going to have to have a negative 1 plus 9t 
because if I multiply this in, it'll give me one. If I multiply this in, it'll give me negative nine T. So if I do this multiplication in reverse, I'm gonna get exactly what I had in this step. So I, can, I know that by factoring out the negative one, this is what I would have. So then what I could do is I could take this negative one and just put it in the very front of everything because it's all multiplied together. And then this would be nine T plus one, and then this would be nine T minus one. So you see, this was so close to this that I knew I could factor out a negative one and flip it around and make it match in exactly the correct form. So then I'll still have the negative one there, but this then would follow the rule over here a plus b, a minus b, you take the first term squared minus the second term squared and then you're done. So what you'll have is 9t and you'll square it minus the second term and then you'll square that too. And so then I'll have the negative one here and this by the way is all one thing. So when you, <clears throat> when you do the 9t plus one, 9t minus one, this becomes a quantity joined by a minus sign. The whole thing then is multiplied by the negative one that's remaining out in the front. So inside of here, what am I going to get? 9 times 9 is 81, and then minus 1 here. And so what you're going to get when you multiply that negative 1 at the very last step is negative 80, this is a t squared, negative 81 t squared plus 1. Negative 81 t squared plus 1. Now, I'm going to admit to you <clears throat> that these steps here were, was not really any simpler than just multiplying this out the long way. I, I get that. But part of my job is i got to teach you different ways to do things. You already know that how to multiply the 9t times the 1, the 9t times the negative 9t, and then this times this and this times this. Simplify it all. Okay, now I'm trying to show you a couple of different ways to do things because in some equations later on, it might be simpler to do it this way, and you need to kind of know all avenues available to you. So we pull out the minus one to make this match the proper form, then we just use the, this is called the difference of two squares, so that we can get it down uh, to our final answer there. All right, what else do we have? We just have a few more to give us a little practice with this. What if we have uh, x squared minus three multiplied by x squared plus three? If we were going to multiply these two things together, first we realize we have the same terms matching here, the same term matching here, they're just different signs. So that looks exactly like this, a plus b, a minus b. I understand that this is a plus and this is a minus, and this is a minus and this is a plus, but I could just as easily arrange it so it's x plus 3, x minus 3. So what you have is the first term squared, x squared, and we'll square that, minus whatever the second term is squared. Now what happens when you take a square and you raise it, you multiply the powers, so you get x to the fourth minus 3 times 3 is 9. So the answer to this is x to the fourth minus 9. And you can see that this is actually quite simpler than multiplying everything out and simplifying everything once you recognize that the form is correct, or that the form is, is uh, one of the ones that we've studied. Now what if we have s to the third power plus t to the third power, and we're gonna raise that whole thing squared. Now, of course, I could write this as s cubed plus t cubed, and then again, times s cubed plus t cubed. I can write it all out, and I can do all the, all the terms and all that, but then I realize this is a binomial, and I'm squaring it. Yeah, I have some exponents here, and that's gonna make it harder, but it's basically a binomial squared. So what do I do? I go over here and I refer. Well, when it's a plus b squared, it's just a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. This squared plus two times this times this plus this squared. So and you don't want to do too many things at once. The first term squared, just write it like this and do the squaring later. Then it's plus two times whatever the first term is, in this case s cubed, times whatever the second term uh, is, in this case t cubed, two times those things, and then the last term squared. So it's t cubed squared, like that. Then in the next step, I say, what happens when I have a power raised to a power? I multiply them. s to the sixth plus two times s cubed t cubed. There's not much to do there. You can't really add the exponents or anything because they're different. And then this will be t to the sixth because I have to multiply these exponents. s six plus two s t cubed t six. That's it. Final answer. All right. Now let's take a look at what would happen if I have x times y multiplied by x minus y squared. 
Now, the x times y is just sitting off in the front multiplied by whatever x minus y squared is. But I know that this is a special case because it's a binomial squared. It just has a minus sign instead of a plus. Now remember that you read it like this. a minus b is a squared minus 2ab plus, always a plus at the end, b squared. All right? Of course, if you forget that, just write it as x minus y times x minus y and multiply the whole thing out. But we're trying to teach you how to use these things. So the way you do it is you write the x, y here. And then inside of here, you go ahead and do the multiplication of this. It's the first term squared minus 2 times the first term times the second term, right? And then always a plus last term squared. Now you have something which is called a trinomial here and it's multiplied by x, so that x times y, which means this entire term gets distributed into all three of what's inside. So when I multiply here, I get x cubed times y because I add the exponents on the x, minus 2x squared, y squared, because when I multiply this in here, I add the exponents to x and the exponents to y. And then over here, it's going to be x times y cubed because I add the exponents on y. Let me double check. x cubed y minus 2x squared minus squared um, plus xy cubed. That's the final answer. All right. Just a couple more. Um, not too bad. We're just kind of learning as we go here. What if we have... Now, this one's weird looking at first. p to the nth power minus 1 squared. Don't get worried so much if it looks weird. Like, what's this nth here? Okay, it's just another exponent. Who cares? It's not 3 or 4 or 7. It's just an, an exponent n. It's some unknown exponent. I don't know what it is. It's some variable exponent. But what I know is that this is a binomial and it's squared. So the same exact rule applies as to what I just did here. It's the first thing squared minus 2 times this times this plus the second thing squared. So what do I have? First term is this squared means I'm going to raise the whole thing to the 2 power. And then because of this minus sign, it would be minus 2 times whatever the first thing is, p to the nth power, times whatever the second thing is, which is a 1, and then always a plus sign in the end, I have 1 squared. So just write it as 1 squared. Now what happens when I have p to the nth to the 2? That looks a little weird at first, but when you remember that n is just an exponent like anything else, it's an exponent raised to an exponent. When you have an exponent raised to an exponent, all you do is multiply these exponents. What is 2 times n? Just 2n. That's all you have to do. They're multiplied together. Minus 2 times p to the nth. Of course, it's times 1, so that disappears. And then plus 1. Final answer. p to the 2nth minus 2 times p to the nth plus 1. That's the final answer. All right. Now, here is the very last one that I want to do. And if you look closely, this should actually look very familiar because we actually kind of talked about this problem a couple lessons ago. What if I have u plus v uh, times x plus y times u minus v uh, times x minus y? Now, we actually talked about this a few lessons ago because we said, how would we do that? We didn't solve it, but we talked about it. We said, how would we do it in the old way? We said, well, what we could do is we could just cover this up and we could do FOIL here. That's going to give us four terms. We'll distribute this into two and then we'll distribute this into two and that's going to give us four terms. And then we'll take this and do the same thing. That will give us four terms. So this will give us four terms times this, which will give us four terms. Four times four is 16. That's going to give us 16 terms. That's a lot of terms. Most of which or a lot of which will cancel and we'll get some answer. Now we didn't do it because I said, hey, there's some special products that are going to help us. So now that we've done this enough, you should start to see some patterns. This is u plus v. It obviously doesn't match this, but this is u minus v. So those kind of go together. x plus y kind of goes with x minus y. So let's just make it a little bit clearer and say u plus v. Let's go ahead and rewrite it as u minus v right next door. And then we'll write the x plus y and then make this x minus y next door. We can rearrange the order of this stuff because when I multiply things, um, multiplication doesn't matter the order. So I can take 5 times 10 times 20, and that's the same as 20 times 5 times times um, 10, right? Or whatever order I said. But the numbers doesn't the numbers uh, don't matter the order in which you do the multiplication. So in this case, I'm going to take and move these around. Then I can recognize this for what it is. It's a plus b times a minus b. What was that? We said in the very beginning, it's a squared minus b squared when you have this kind of situation. First thing squared minus the second thing squared. So the first term squared is just 
u squared minus the second thing squared, which is v. Whoops, forgot to put the square. Squared, like this, right? But that's multiplied by this, which we can see now is x plus y, x minus y. So it's the first thing squared, x squared, minus the second thing squared, y squared. So this is not the answer, the final answer anyway, but we have taken basically half of the problem and condensed it down to two binomials, which we can now multiply a lot easier. How do we multiply these binomials? Well, um, we're just gonna do it the old fashioned way. We'll take this times these two. So u squared times x squared. What we're gonna do is write it as literally u squared times x squared. We can't do much else with it. And then this times the negative y squared give us negative u squared y squared. So we've distributed this and we move here. Negative v squared times this will give us negative v squared x squared. And then this times this will give us positive, don't forget, positive, uh, v squared y squared. And then let me just double check. u squared x squared minus u squared y squared minus u squared x squared plus v squared, or sorry, this is v squared x squared and then v squared y squared. So these are u's, and these are v's, and these are x's, and these uh, are x and y, and this is x and y. So this is the final answer. Why is it the final answer? Because I don't have any terms that I can add together. I don't have another term that's u squared x squared anywhere. I don't, I don't have another term that's u squared y squared, and the same thing with these other ones. Now how many terms do we have in our answer? Four. How many terms did we say that we would get if we, if we did the entire multiplication by hand? From before, we said we'd get 16 terms. So that means that if we had done this problem by hand, expanding the whole thing out from just doing the, the foil over and over again, we would have gotten 16 terms, but 12 of them would have all canceled out to zero, which would have left us with only four terms in the final answer, right? Which is what we actually get here. And it's much fewer steps. So it was only because this problem was set up to be a special case for you to recognize that these go together and these go together, and then you can make it very simple and do that. It's not going to always work that way, but it's a good example of how you can use these special products to um, actually save yourself some time. So try to remember these. If you don't remember them, you can always do them by hand, but it's going to be handy because in just a little bit, we're gonna be talking about factoring in algebra, which is basically we're gonna be going backwards from the multiplication that we're doing now. And very often it's very handy to have these in the back of your mind when you're doing factoring because uh, it's gonna to be too much to explain now until we get there. It's going to be handy for you to very uh, easily visualize uh, that, which only is going to come from working problems. So try to burn these in your mind. And when we start doing factoring, we'll be using these same exact re relations that we've been using in this section as well. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.